Hello, Lazio all over the world. Welcome to another episode of Lazio Lounge. We have so many things to talk about in this episode that I don't know how, how we're going to manage to do it. We have to talk about Atletico Lazio. We have to talk about Lazio Inter. But probably we should start, Alistair McKenzie, from the Champions League draw. Because, I mean, we, we got an old friend back, right? Another unexpected uh, draw against uh, Bayern Munich. Uh, it looks like something already like happened already in the past, right? We already played against them, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a weird flashback, isn't it? Because it's kind of, it's been quite a similar build up to that draw in a way in that we got quite a nice group um, in the draw to begin with. We managed to finish second and get some good results. But on the other side, Bayern look like a team that is, you know, one of the real front runners to win the whole competition. Was that the year they beat PSG in the final, the year we played them? I can't remember if it was that season or, or They not, won the but... tournament that year. Yeah, I thought so. And I feel like they they could maybe this year as well. So, I mean, it's, it's certainly one of the harder draws we got. I mean, maybe with the exception of Man City, who although no. themselves are having some problems. But I don't know. Do you agree it's one of the toughest draws we possibly could have had? Yeah, probably I would have put... Real Madrid and Manchester City as the best, even though Manchester City is not playing great and Real Madrid had a couple of bad injuries. Uh, it's true that Bayern Munich now is not playing great, but we'll play them in February. So, you know, in two months time, they, they could be back in top form. So that's, that's the most scary part. They have a striker who looks like he's scoring a couple of goals, right? So... <laughs> The Mario the, Mario Gila versus Harry Kane uh, matchup is going to be interesting. Do you think Mario Gila is going to play? I mean, Romagnoli is going to be back once. I hope Mario Gila will probably be sold for eighty million euros to Saudi Arabia in January, so probably not. But uh, no, I mean, I, I was looking at them and I've been kind of following them, you know, from from afar a little bit this season. But I was looking at their. Uh, results again earlier to remind myself of their season so far and it's really weird because they've generally been pretty dominant but then they've had these crazy moments where they they got knocked out of the cup by some team nobody's heard of from the lower leagues they got smashed yep. by uh Eintracht Frankfurt um that was a week ago I think um but yeah they've, they've had a few kind of weird you know blackout results but then the rest of the time, they seem to be everybody. And obviously, they completely dominated what looked like a fairly tough group with Galatasaray, Man United, Co Copenhagen. But then at the end of that, Copenhagen managed to get a draw in Munich. So um, yeah. there are clearly some weak spots there, even if they're still a really, really strong team most of the time. There's been enough results this season where you're kind of like, uh, occasionally they do take their eye off the ball. But over two legs, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the date is out. Lazio Bayern Munich will be the 14th of February. And Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of couples will, will struggle for that game. Oh, uh, <laughs> God, I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, I will have to find an excuse with my wife as well. Or maybe bring her to, to the stadium. Like, you know, yeah. this is our San Valentine. And then the, the return match is... 5th of March, we're playing home the 14th of February and then away the 5th of, 5th of March. So a long time. Let's hope that Lazio get back in a good shape. We, we get some injury players back. But, you know, as we were mentioning, it's probably only Manchester City, Real Madrid would have been worse than that. Yeah, I mean... I think, like you said, I think it's probably a good thing that there is this break of a couple of months before they continue with the competition because right now you wouldn't really want Lazio going into this. Uh, you would hope that the club's in a slightly better state by now than, than sorry, by then than they are now. Um, and the other thing we just have to hope is that uh, with with the ties being, as you described, the game in Rome coming first, we just have to hope that we're still in it for the second leg this time because that was the biggest disappointment yeah. last time was 
losing 4-1 at home, it was basically over by half time of the first leg. And, you know, all these individual errors from every single defender, I think. Um, so I, I think at the very least, we just need to hope that they can put in a strong enough first leg performance in Rome to, to keep that alive and at least keep some excitement and keep the dream alive going to Munich. You mentioned this defenders making mistakes. I mean, it's something uh, that recalls me. Uh, at least that's that... at least that's stopped now. That doesn't happen anymore, right? No, absolutely, never happened. But the important thing is, last time we played against Bayern Munich, we didn't have fans at the stadium. This time we'll, we will have them, so th that will have a huge impact, I think, especially in our home game. Uh, so let's hope that we have the Stadio Olimpico full and that the support of the fan will be huge and very important for the for the team because I think that makes a massive difference, right? Yeah, I mean, this, this is a disappointment really because when you're looking at that draw um, earlier on, there aren't really, I mean, I know you said maybe you, Bayern Munich are, you would rank them behind Real and, and City, but you look at that draw and there aren't really any soft teams apart from Sociedad um, to, 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 that you can hope to get. And that is the difference between finishing first and second. And it was a big disappointment. I know we're a few days late, so we don't need to go into it in huge depth. But the performance in Madrid against Atletico felt like the performance of a team that was playing a dead rubber rather than that was playing for first place because... There was a lot, as we can now tell. You know, that's the difference between drawing Bayern Munich or drawing someone else. Inter. <laughs> Atletico Madrid yeah. pick Inter. So it, it would have been an Italian derby. No, it's you'd not. Rather, you'd rather play Inter than Bayern, though. Obviously. And we saw it on Sunday. Yes, I mean, we had the option, right? We had the chance. Winning it in Madrid would have mean finishing first. If I'm not wrong, Atletico Madrid won the last 20 games at home, so it wasn't an easy challenge. But I, I would say Lazio didn't play that bad, but the first 10 minutes, at least, very disappointing to see how soft we started. The, the, the first goal of uh, Atletico Madrid is really soft, and it's really disappointing to see an experienced player like Adam Marzic making such a mistake. And the fact that he repeated the mistakes just a couple of days later is really uh, annoying and uh, makes you really wonder how much these players are really focused. Because, you know, in Madrid, it was a soft challenge. Yesterday, he passed the ball to Lautaro Martinez in front of our goalkeeper. I mean, from you could expect, well, expect not, but you could see a youngster making that type of mistake, but a 31 years old a defender who has started every single game this season in Serie A shouldn't be making those terrible mistakes. Yeah, um, it was it, it was the difference really because look, I mean, I, I think overall to to start looking at the Inter game with a, a an opinion that a lot of people will disagree with, <laughs> I think that was actually a good performance from Lazio. Um, one of the better performances we've seen in this run in the last month and a half where there have been so many poor ones. You know, that that first half was going from one end to the other. Lazio were actually managing to, you know, ask some questions in the final third. Okay, the chances they were creating weren't amazing, but they were at least creating something. They were going to toe -to it into. But the problem is in those that kind of game where you know nobody's getting huge chances it's just as important to avoid mistakes as it is to to make that breakthrough and and i think we're frustrated because like you say we've seen it before we'll see it again i'm sure and it was just such a gift and i don't want to blame the entire result and performance on marisic but it came at a really bad moment because that first half had been so even we were almost at half time and um, I think that probably took the wind out of their sails. I mean, we were playing, I would say that we were playing much better in the first half than Inter. 
yes, as you were mentioning, we didn't create huge chances, but this is Lazio 23-24 version. So, you know, but we were creating. Summer had to make a couple of decent saves, I would say. On the other hand, Provedel didn't do pretty much nothing. We were defending quite good. We were playing good. And uh, Chiro had a chance. Kamada had a chance. I mean... Oh, God. I Kamada's shooting was as bad as Castellanos yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Well, beginning of second half, Rovella had a huge chance. Amazing. And what a that, move. That, yeah, but he finished it really badly. That that was a bad mistake. He had all the... I think he was surprised to be where he was. <laughs> and it's not, it's not often, you know, Rovella finds himself one-on-one -on -one and has to work out how to finish, but... I think it was a good save because you know summer mm. went off in the other direction and kind of saved it with his legs but no i mean they started the second half like you say pretty brightly as well there are a few good good opportunities good openings there as has been looking far more lively recently thankfully uh, finally um after a season where he's been almost invisible and i thought he was starting to ask a few questions so yeah it's just how brutally clinical inter are and I've just written something about this today because it's so different, I guess, than the whole idea of Pazza Inter and this team that can explode at any moment and has all these crazy games and you can never quite trust them. And this version of Inter is completely different because they just punish you. You know, you give them a, a, a small glimpse of an opportunity and, and they've taken it. They had two goals with two shots on target. Um, okay, lads, you're making mistakes, but... Inter taught Lazio a lesson in the importance of pouncing when you get your moments. And Lazio need to learn that lesson at some point because, God, they, they just cannot score goals. Not only, I would say it's very difficult to score against Inter. I mean, yeah. we created chances, but it was really hard to finish it. So they're very good defending. And when they have the chance, they take them. Uh, again, they've been very lucky because obviously the two chances they created were our mistakes. But, you know, we had a huge chance. We had a huge chance even in, in Madrid and we didn't take it. That's the biggest difference, right? In, in these big games, you're not going to have 10 huge chances. You're going to have two or three or three and you have to take them. At least one of those two, you have to score. And Lazio didn't. So that's that's the difference at the end of the day, right? The Inter had a couple of chances. They they scored. We didn't. And uh, you mentioned Zaccagni. That probably was one of our best players. In the second half, Zaccagni dropped form, like pretty much all the other strikers. Again, not a great performance from Chile Mobile. But it's also true that when Castellanos came in, he was pretty much invisible. So there's something not working there. Even Felipe Anderson, not a great match. I mean, I, I thought our midfield played well. Kamada, yeah. we have to talk about him, started instead of Luis Alberto. I thought he had a good match. And I was surprised to see him sub uh, when he was still playing at, the, at a decent level. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think everyone was surprised to see him start in the first place. Um, and, you know, I think all things considered together, you have to... You have to think about that. This wasn't just uh, a Lazio side in bad form playing an Inter side on the opposite, you know, 15 games unbeaten now. This was a Lazio team that's playing what's now become their third and fourth choice centre-backs and has lost its most influential midfielder. I say lost him. I mean, Sally's said he wasn't he wasn't fit enough to, to play, basically. Do you believe it? Uh, I, I can believe it because because of the season he's had and how many games he's played and then, of course, the little nickels, niggles he's had here and there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's it, it did take everyone by surprise a little bit at the time. So, um, yeah, I think to go back to your point, the, the performance of the midfield was was good it was really impressive they were really you know taking the game to inter and that's a real area of strength for them um i think it, i can't remember who it was i think it was arigo saki someone one of these old 
Italian legends they have on the Italian media, talking about Inter's midfield being one of the best, if not the best, in the world, and saying that Barella, Celanoglu, Mkhitaryan, you know, and not in the world, but in, in Italy probably. Definitely in Italy, but not in Europe. Europe. I think there's uh, that was the argument they were trying to make. Um, but yeah, I mean, considering who they were up against, I thought that trio did really well. And the possession was very balanced, um, number of passes, all those things. I mean, statistically, you look at the end of the game, and I, I posted a picture of this last night on Twitter because they had all the stats laid out, and it looked like a draw because everything was even. Um, but obviously, that was the difference. It was just Inter's sharpness versus Lazio's yeah, yeah. complete bluntness. <laughs> You have to remember that Lazio finished one man down and after the second goal, the game was over. So the stats were a little bit different because in the last 25 minutes, Lazio pretty much disappeared. So yeah. this tells you that before the second goal, Lazio was playing better than, than Inter. And again, we didn't talk about Guendouzi, but I think he's having a, a good season. I mean, not a full season, but this, this start of the season is quite good from Guendouzi. Uh, he's picking up. He's becoming more a leader. Uh, I thought yesterday he was pretty much everywhere. So that definitely helped Kamada. And again, I thought Kamada uh, was the right decision. Inter has a very physical midfield. And Kamada is able to give a hand in defense, even to help a little bit Rovella. So again, I think Luis Alberto was playing badly in the last month or so. And I thought Sari made the right decision. Uh, the problem is we, we have to start scoring goals. Our strikers need to step up. Also, our midfield needs to contribute a little bit more. Uh, because, I mean, if you don't score, it's going to be very difficult to score, to win games. So, yeah, true. Um, I thought at least there was a bit more creativity in their passing, a few more kind of through balls and interesting passes, being balls being played. Because um, even that has been... A rarity at times this season but you're right is the the goals from midfield have been lacking and Kamada had two or three you know opportunities to at least test the keeper from the edge of the box and just completely lacked composure I mean it's it's interesting the thing you say about um the final 25 minutes or half an hour you're absolutely right but what does what does that tell you about the team you know once they go 2-0 down there's 30 minutes good. left. You know, that that is not a game that's over, needing to score twice in 30 minutes. But for Lazio, it kind of is. And yeah. it looked like the players thought that because, I mean, obviously Inter at that point are very happy to do what they're most dangerous at, soak up the pressure and go direct. And they almost got a third goal a couple of times after that. But it, it it's strange that Lazio's, the better part of Lazio's game was was earlier in the game rather than when they really needed to be pushing and i think i don't know i don't know if you agree with me but i thought that the substitution were worse than the the, the player that started they they didn't create anything and in a sense we were off balance because we had at the same time pedro luis alberto castellanos all playing together and instead of creating more pressure we were <laughs> struggling to to defend when inter was counter-attacking so in a I sense yeah it's a slight act of desperation chucking on tati and demobile together because that's just not really happened do you know i think it's kind of like well i don't know what else to do so and then yeah. he said afterwards he doesn't think that they can really play together so yeah but playing with pedro as well i mean i can understand felipe anderson that can play for me in in a midfield but pedro i mean he could do it probably 10 years ago not now right uh, so yeah i thought I, I can understand and this is very inzaghi type of solution right he was when we were losing he was putting strikers after striker after striker and we were finished with 10 strikers in front and no one in midfield but i thought against this type of inter we was we were off balance so maybe put Vecino in instead of Castellanos. It could have been a better solution. Yeah, possibly. Um, I just think, uh, 
Yeah, I just think there was a lack of belief, and I, I, you yeah. can understand why because the club is scoring so few goals this season that how how could they think? You know, Inter have conceded seven in in sixteen games now, which is a hell of a record. I think that was their fourth uh, clean sheet in a row. So why <laughs> why would Lazio's players? think at 2-0 down we're going to come back into this come on big 30 minutes i mean it's it, they should be as as professionals kind of having that mentality but it's quite difficult to really believe that having had the the kind of six or seven weeks that they've just had uh, it, it was sad in a way because the the club was celebrating the late goal of caicedo against Cagliari. i think it was the day before a couple of years ago and uh, that team would never give up, right? That team would fight. We were losing 2-1 at the, the, the last minute of the game, right? And we won 3-2 in the extra time, scoring twice in extra time. So it's not impossible. And that team never gave up. This team, first goal they could see, this game is over. The game is over. They don't believe it. And this is the thing that drives me crazy. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think Inter is the best team in Italy. I think uh, scoring against Inter is quite complicated, but Bologna did it, right? Sassuolo won against them. So it's not impossible to do it. If you give up, it's over. Yeah. Um, well, still, I would still contend, like I said at the start, that that is a better Lazio performance yeah. than what we've seen. And I do actually, I mean, I, we'll get on in a second to Sari and all the stuff that he's been saying and what's been going on there. But I, one thing I did agree with was when he said after the game that the, the boos and whistles were about what's come before and not about tonight. Because I think that, okay, you never want to be losing games at home. And it's been a while, actually, since Lazio have lost at home in Serie A. And uh I think considering how good Inter have been and that everyone more or less acknowledges that they're another level from the rest of the league this year, that was not a bad effort for this side. And um, they were just punished by, by you know, lapses of attention. But, you know, there's a lot going on there, Vitor. I mean, I don't know where we want to start with this stuff, but actually... We were both there last night, but you were in the thick of it with the fans. So why don't you tell me what it was like when, at the end of the game, everyone's booing the players, everyone's unhappy. Was it like that the whole match? Was that just at the end? What was the atmosphere like? Well, it was funny because we started booing Acerbi and then we finished booing our players. So <laughs> that wasn't great. Well... You know, uh, I have to say that I'm surrounded by people complaining about every single player. I think if Mbappé would play for Lazio, they will still find a way to criticize him. So, uh, yeah, second half, everybody was very disappointed. Uh, the problem is, I thought Lazio played great, played well, but the mistake Marzic made was embarrassing. I don't know what you thought. I thought he should have been sub at the end of the first half and seeing coming back was very disappointing for me for the fans and seeing that they gave up after the second goal again was really annoying um to be honest i didn't hear the, the fans booing sari i thought they were booing the players most of all all the substitution yeah. player was booed and you know felipe anderson was so not a great match etc um and I agree with Sari. I thought Lazio played well. Obviously, against Inter, it's not enough. But I thought it was much better performance compared to the Salernitana one, to the Cagliari one. So you can see sign of uh, encouraging, but you know the play, the the fans want to win and don't accept losing with such bad mistakes. Most of all, yeah. And I think the Bears. Because there were a lot, and I think that that was, like Sari said, more about the general season that's been happening rather than the game. But but the um, you know the backdrop of this, which is probably worth explaining for anyone who's who's kind of missed it, but is is Sari's comments last week where he essentially complained about the fans having uh, too high expectations. And the, the atmosphere around Lazio being devastating and 
you know, I'm paraphrasing a bit here because I don't have it all in front of me, but it was a, a strange, um, a, a quite a strange press conference and resulted in the world's longest banner <laughs> at the game last night. It was almost a kind of, you know, Derby style Kid. choreography with the, the Curva Nords banner responding to Sari saying, again, I've not got all in front of me, but essentially it was like, expectations come from your you know what, not from the past but from your what your expectations are based on the future and your history and traditions and all this and anyone who doesn't understand that get out of Lazio and uh, what do you make of all this well three things the first one the fans were already collecting the money for the for the eventual derby in the Coppa Italia so <laughs> The second one is Sadi didn't mention the fans and he said, I'm not talking about the fans. He was talking more about the journalists around Lazio that are creating this too high expectation that they know Lazio won't be able to achieve. And so they create this atmosphere of permanent delusion around the club and uh, obviously influence the fans, right? I mean, if I read on the newspaper that Lazio should finish second every single time and we finish fifth, then obviously I'm not happy and I'm going to uh, complain about that. So he, he didn't have, he wasn't against the fans that all, honestly always supported the club. Uh, but obviously this didn't impact well. Obviously the journalist made it look like he was against the fans and the fans answered back. Um, again, the club, the, 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 the achievement the club can make it, unfortunately now it depends on the owner on the money the owner is willing to spend so uh, you could be i don't know real madrid but have the money of lotito you won't be able to win the champions league you won't be able even to compete for the champions league so this is the thing that fans have to understand if manchester city was nothing before uh, the sale now they are top club but 15 years ago, Manchester City was fighting for relegation in the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's always... Uh, this is this has just kind of opened up something that's always been there in football generally, I would say, of the kind of like, what... How do you view, you know, overachievement versus underachievement um, at clubs like Lazio, I that are kind of like outside the established elite where the expectation every year is to win titles, which, you know, when you're Milan, you're Inter, you're Juventus, that's kind of what they're used to historically from being the dominant clubs in the country. You find those kind of clubs everywhere, you know, United, Liverpool in, in the Premier League. That's and, and then if you're kind of just on the outside of that, then... You know, obviously, you're still that shouldn't stop you for aiming for those things. But then again, if your financial um, parameters aren't as aren't as big, if you can't compete with the bigger clubs for those things, yeah, what what is reasonable in terms of expectation? Well, um, uh, can I say something about this? I thought Lazio did a, probably the best summer transfer in the Lotito era, so I was really optimistic this season, and probably this is making things even harder because summer transfer was good so uh, we were all expecting to be fighting for the fourth position seeing napoli struggling seeing milan struggling we should have been there we should have been above of this team instead we are bottom of the table nearly uh so this makes things even worse because and i don't know you but i think it's not the new signings that are disappointing it's the all players of Lazio that are playing badly, Luis Alberto, Gire Mobile, Malzic, etc. So it's it's bizarre because I thought finally we did a good transfer market and said things are going even worse than before. Yeah, I think it's all fixable things that aren't working, where whether it's the mentality of, of the players, whether it's the tactics, the way the team's being set up, whether it's the selection. I think that there there's no doubt that fans have a right to complain about a Lazio side that's in 11, 11th place in the table. I mean, I don't think that is an, that's about, that's something that's based on unrealistic expectations. 
And the fact that they've reached the last 16 of the Champions League, it is possible to to celebrate that while being unhappy about the season as a whole. I think that is not an unreasonable position to be in. And don't think anyone's really taking away what a, what a massive achievement that is. It's not got as much credit as it probably deserves, maybe because um, of the group the last year were in, that, that it's not been like a showstopper that they've knocked out some, you know, massive European side to get there. But they have still achieved something enormous by, by reaching the knockout stages there. Yeah, but uh, I mean, Inter's group was worse than ours. And they still finished second, and I didn't see Gareth Sport complaining and saying, "Ah, this is a disaster, right?" Yeah. So, but point is, I think that there's a truth in like your your expectations aren't aren't based on what happened, you know, 20 years ago, no. <laughs> or 30 years ago, or whenever. Your expectations are based on what's just happened before and where the position you're in now, and so that is why it's not an unrealistic thing for people to say the Lazio should be able to both compete in the Champions League and compete for a, a European finish or top four finish this season. Because, you know, the whole thing last season when they man managed to finish second, but at the cost of a pretty terrible European campaign, was that, um, you know, that, that, that we needed more depth. We needed the squad to be improved. We needed more players in. And like you say, the summer transfer window, they did address those things. Maybe they underestimated uh, how big a hole Sergei would leave because that has been a problem. But look, we're four months into the season now. This team is pretty well settled and it should be doing better than Definitely. especially these results that they've been getting in, uh, in games against teams down in the bottom half of the table. 11th isn't good enough. No, that, that's obvious. But at the same time, last year we finished above Inter and... For me, Inter was the best team last year. And I think this year is still the best team. You couldn't think that Lazio would have finished above Inter. I think Juventus is not a much better team than Lazio, but without the Champions League and with Vlaovic and uh, Chiesa back, they're a good team. I can see Juventus finishing above us. Napoli should be a better team than Lazio. You know, Milan should be a better team than Lazio. So. It shouldn't be a surprise if Lazio finished fifth. I mean, last, last year we've been lucky, we overachieved. We should be fighting for the fourth spot. So thinking that what Sadi said, that Lazio uh, did a miracle to finish second, I understand that maybe miracle is too much, but definitely it, it, it overachieved, right? Yeah, but the other thing is, you know, okay, maybe this Lazio team isn't that good, but... Serie A isn't very good this year. I mean, look at that group of teams. They, everyone has very obvious flaws from fourth place downwards. You know, Bologna are up in fourth at the moment for a reason. That's a very good Bologna team. Don't get me wrong. They're playing great football. Tiago Motta is a great coach. They're playing some nice stuff. Got good players. But Bologna wouldn't be in fourth if the other teams around them we're playing to their potential and none of them are. So that's why as well, this it's not an unrealistic expectation for Lazio to achieve that because the standard of the teams they're competing with isn't incredible. It really isn't beyond the ones that you've mentioned, the absolute top three this season. No, we are playing. We, I agree. I mean, we should have been there, but again, we should have been there because Milan, Napoli are not performing, but I mean, even Roba should have been there, right? They have Lukaku, they have Dybala, best manager in the world. So, I mean, it's not only Lazio that is uh, underperforming. Obviously, we are massively underperforming, but now we have Empoli, Udinese, etc. We have the chance. I think now we have to really get back the points. We have to prove that this team is... Focus now, because otherwise it's going to be a nightmare. Yes, I agree. But if at the beginning of the season they would have told you Lazio will finish second again, I would say it's going to be very difficult. I don't believe it. Yeah. No, agreed. Um, 
I think we've sorted out that point. I mean, I think if you look at the table now, the problem is that there was, we said a couple of weeks ago, even while we were dropping points in all these awful performances and bad games and results in Serie A, you're looking at the table and it's like, ah, we're still in this. I mean, I don't know how, but they are still in this. But now things have moved on the last couple of weeks and the gap is now seven points. There's you know, a huge group of clubs between Lazio and that fourth spot. It is getting pretty difficult now to imagine them pulling themselves back into that. Um, well, I don't know I, what it's going to take. If it's going to take a change of change of ways in terms of the, how we set this side up, if it's going to take January signings to try and bring a bit of life into it, I I don't know. I think that's why everyone's so frustrated right now because it feels like we have been trying a few different things throughout the season and just nothing is kind of bringing it to life. It's true that last year in January, end of December, the, the team's stepped up and start stacking wins and now we have a huge chance i mean if you want to keep the dream alive you have to stack wins now you have empoli frosinone udinese lecce torino torino is tough because it's a way but come on empoli frosinone udinese Lats, uh, lecce you have to win those those no are discussion. all that's like a, a perfect list of teams Lazio would lose to this season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we are talking about win, but you know that Cancellieri is going to score on Friday. We're going to lose <laughs> one nil. Frosinone, it's a derby. They're going to do, you know, the best game of the season. Udinese, I'm not even talking about it. You know, Lecce is going to be a nightmare. Uh, Torino, Cairo is going to pay extra money to everybody to to win against Lazio. So. On paper, this should be the 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 the, the games Lazio will need to win. Unfortunately, we lost Except against Salernitana, right? The only the only game they won Salernitana was against us. So you know, that's what I was going to say. We've said this before. I remember after the November international break, I was just trying to look up there what the run was, but it was, yeah, it was kind we... of uh, Salernitana, Cagliari, Verona. That run, and we got. Uh, one point, no, th four points. No, three, four four three points, points out of nine from three games. You really should be with. So, and that Cagliari win even was <laughs> was yeah. not great. So, no. yeah, I mean, there 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 has to be yeah there there has to be something to to kind of make, make people change their mind about this Lazio team because um, yeah, yeah at the moment the atmosphere isn't. The, the problem is they don't believe it, right? It's the players that don't trust themselves. So, anyway, let's hope that we finished Christmas uh, in a nice mood with a Friday game against Empoli. Again, Friday. Not that much time to recover. But, I mean, if we don't start winning Friday, then I think all our dreams are over. I don't think even, even the Europe League will be very hard to achieve, right? You're right. You're definitely right about Cancellieri. He's going to look like Mbappe on Friday. No, absolutely no doubt. <laughs> Go and ask this. I'm going to buy you at the fantasy football just for the game. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's hoping. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, it's it's it was. I still think good performance against Inter and, and something to build on there. If, but it's about yeah, replicating that level against. And that, and that approach and that mentality against smaller teams and especially in away games you know that's been such a such a problem yeah anyway Alistair let's wrap it up here uh let's hope that Empoli Lazio something changes and we get finally the even because of away games we have been terrible we started strong but we are really when was the last game the last away game we won I think it was Sassuolo right 21st of October. <laughs> we are end of December. Wow, two months without an away win. That's terrible. Anyway, let's hope that we can change things uh, this Friday. Thanks again, Alistair, for joining me. Uh, thanks, everybody, for supporting us, especially our Patreon. If you want to support us, patreon.com slash Lazio Lounge. And uh, we'll be back, hopefully, after Empoli Lazio. Bye, Alistair. Cheers.